We have some breaking news in the crypto space. BlockFi CEO Zach Prince tweeting just minutes ago that the firm is not being sold for $25 million. This is responding to earlier reports that the struggling crypto lender is close to being bought by FTX's CEO, Sam Bankman-Fried. We want to talk a little bit more about what's going on in this space. We have Corey Clipston. He is the CEO of Swan Bitcoin. And Corey, just first your reaction to this news, because we talk so much about the consolidation that we are seeing in this space after this massive sell-off that we've seen in Bitcoin and a number of the other coins. Sam Bankman fried now reportedly eyeing another acquisition. What do you think? Yeah, it's pretty fascinating to uh, to watch this all play out. And, uh, and by the way, thank you so much for, for having me on. And uh, yeah, so we had obviously broad markets pull back basically the entire year. Uh, we know that crypto and Bitcoin are uh, cross-owned by a lot of larger players uh, this cycle versus previous cycles. So it's not sort of uh, just a retail-driven market anymore. So you basically had the whole crypto industry being kind of risk on, risk being turned off. And so those prices got pulled down. And what it did when the tide started to go out is it, explo- it exposed the extremely risky operations and sort of investment and risk management practices of a lot of players in the space. So not only were the the coins themselves dropping in price, but essentially all this leverage that had been piled on by what's been sort of referred to as the CFI lenders, in particular, a business model that's really exploded in the last two or three years with venture capital and, you know, sort of Uber and WeWork style uh, venture capital funding of their growth models, which turned out to be unprofitable and extremely risky if they were going to uh, to keep growing. So that's essentially what we see. This is kind of like a symptom at first of the prices dropping, but then it's become a massive accelerant over the last five or six weeks or so. And this goes for Celsius, BlockFi, you know, Abra, Nexo, all, all these companies in that kind of category of, of doing the CFI lending thing. And that reported $25 million purchase price would have marked 99% down from their most recent valuation. In regard to Sam Bankman Fried, who I'm going to go with SBF uh, for this purpose, buying up all these companies, lending money to others. We talked to David Trainer earlier this week. He's the CEO of New Constructs. Here's what he said about this recent phenomenon, and then I want to get your reaction. Listen. FTX is, is trying to save themselves by propping up these other zombie businesses. I mean, this is like AOL buying movie phone. <laughs> now, that was in reaction to reports they might buy Robinhood, a notion they've pushed back on. Nonetheless, it continues to be rumored about every couple of days that FTX might bail somebody out. What do you make of that sentiment there? Yeah, I mean, they make so much money being a counterparty and a market participant with these businesses, speaking of FTX and and frankly of Alameda Research, the other side of the house, that's the market maker that actually trades on their own exchanges against their customers and, you know, participates in all these other exchanges doing arbitrage around the world. Um, You know, even if you just take a look at like Sam Bankman frieds net worth on his own, it's worth it to him to spend even, say, a billion or two of his own money to sort of prop these things up because it will be uh, actually accretive to his net worth or it'll make his, his own personal net worth go down less. So it isn't some sort of like altruism to try to prop these things up. It's a very selfish maneuver. And as we look at people who are essentially tearing their hair out at this point, who have money in exchanges like Celsius, we're seeing these freezes, they're not able to transfer. What do people need to understand about any sort of recourse they can get from these crypto exchanges that are either freezing transfers or going bankrupt? Yeah, so I, w- I want to make a very clear distinction between a crypto exchange like, you know, a Coinbase or a Kraken or an FTX, which actually matches orders and <laughs> doesn't rehypothecate your coins and lend them out without your knowledge. Um, I shouldn't say without your knowledge. It's, it's, people have been signing these contracts <laughs> with the CFI lenders. But this business model that kind of erupted in the last couple of years uh, was saying, hey, buy some Bitcoin or buy some crypto with us. And then you can actually make interest on that. Uh, essentially referring to people as depositors, but in the fine print pointing out by depositors, we don't mean depositors. You're actually an unsecured creditor and we can go out the back end with your money and conduct market operations. We can, you know, put it in DeFi protocols that get hacked and put it in, you know, anchor in the Luna UST ecosystem and, and narrowly escape with over half a billion dollars of user funds like Celsius did a uh, day before that collapsed. You know, so they could kind of do whatever they want. And essentially the, the warning that I've been giving for years on all of these businesses to, to their users is that you're being dramatically undercompensated for the risk. 
you know, this model of lending to essentially a trading operation, uh, you know, as an equity partner, you would be an LP in a hedge fund and you should get 80% of the profits. If you're actually lending to a hedge fund, frankly, the only ones that can borrow at decent rates, um, you know, would be really well established hedge funds with real traders, not the kinds of backgrounds of the people that are running these CFI lenders for the most part. And uh, even then you'd be looking at sort of like high end mezzanine rates of, you know, one to one and a half percent per month, you know, 12 to 18 percent, something like that. So, you know, dramatically undercompensated for the risks that they're taking with your coins. And I think you're just seeing it all kind of collapse. Speaking of collapse, the recent collapse of Terra, the liquidity issues that we have been talking about, we've we've heard this call even from people inside your industry saying that we need to see some regulation when it comes to crypto in terms of when we talk about mainstream adoption, that that really needs to happen in order to see wider adoption of this. From your perspective, what would you like to see from the regulation front? Well, I think it's important to just not be hypocritical. So if something is actually operating as a bank, like these CFI lenders have been, then they should be regulated as banks or you should deregulate banks. I don't think you can have it both ways. And similarly, you know, taking the, you know, 150 some essentially unregistered securities with centralized teams trying to increase the price of their, their coin or whatever on Coinbase, you know, those are obviously, you know, pass all four prongs of the Howey test and our securities by the laws that we have on the books. So I think if you're if you're principled and not a hypocrite, you have to either argue for the abolition of the SEC and the deregulation of you know Ponzi schemes targeting your grandma, and you need to be in favor of you know penny stock operators sending direct mail to nursing homes, or you need to regulate these you know penny stock cryptos on Coinbase the same way that you do securities. And finally, the uh, the B over your left shoulder has not fallen off the wall. Thankfully, it has fallen in recent days, though. We're talking 6% down about today and down 60% year to date. What's a realistic bottom for you for Bitcoin? Yeah, I mean, I don't know that it matters that much because it's fallen so much. You know, at this point, people are kind of used to it. I think people would like even the staunchest of Bitcoiners would start to get kind of a, a knot in their gut if you saw a four figure Bitcoin, like sub 10K. But I think you know, the people that are that are hodling here in, you know, 17, 18, 19, 20 range are still going to be buying if they if they see something like uh, I think the the close of the week back in 2017 was 13.8. And that was also the high in the uh, sort of precursor uh, run up in June of 2019. I think we hit 13.8 on June 26th of 2019, if I recall. So feels like there's some price memory somewhere in, you know, the high 13s. And, you know, I'd probably start to feel it a little bit below that, but anything sort of above, you know, 13, 8, 14, something like that just feels like a really good time to be picking up some cheap Bitcoin. And Corey, for retail investors who are seeing some of these headlines about some of these exchanges, and as you mentioned, perhaps not really differentiating between some that act more like a CD account, what is the safest place to keep your crypto right now? Yeah, so I mean, I I fully believe in Bitcoin as a as a self sovereign money at Swan.com. That's everything that we teach and we preach and we educate people about is is taking custody. Um, I think what you want to make sure of those, you know, even if you are using exchange and you're not taking self custody and you're leaving it with a custodian, just make sure that setup is good and don't sign something that lets them go and rehypothecate their coins, meaning don't let them go lend out your coins. The risk reward is not worth it. It never has been. And I think that's being laid obviously bare today. Uh, so just make sure that it's in a user segregated account that only you can remove the coins and that you didn't sign something that said that they can go and trade them for you. Well, do your homework. Thank you so much. Corey Clipston there, Swan Bitcoin CEO. Thank you.